All right, we wanted to bring to you some updates on what's going on with United Auto Workers strike, which has expanded significantly. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, I have to show you uh, Jordan Sheridan, who's doing great work on the ground uh, for us and for his uh, network status coup. He was talking to a worker, and this worker brought up on his own his thoughts and feelings about CNBC anchor Jim Cramer. Take a listen. What's that guy, uh, Jim Cramer? Is that his name? Oh, yeah, let loose. Feel yeah, free. Piece of he needs to bring his fat to Lansing and getting one of these plants over here and see how it feels. You know, it's, it's, it's those who live in gra glass houses shouldn't throw stones, right? And I feel like people who don't do what we do don't know how it is. I think there's a nuclear option on the table if he's not careful. And that nuclear option is a country called Mexico. Say, listen, all the new, you want to know where the new ones are going to be made? We're going to continue to make the old ones. But Pueblo's got a 55,000 person factory for VW. And they got a good educational workforce. It's five dollars an hour. No real pollution control rules. That's not to be mentioned. Have free health care. So you know what? You want to play ball? You want to keep doing this? Mexico. Glad to see you're standing up for the American worker here, Jim. Thanks for that. See how many people buy GM cars. See how many people buy big three cars. Period. You know, if they want to shut down and go someplace else like that, that's fine. Go ahead, do it. But I've been, I've owned GM cars my whole life. They do that. I will never buy a GM car again. Bring his fat yeah. behind here and see what it's like. Walk yeah, a day friend. in my shoes. I mean, Kramer has been cartoonishly evil with regard. I mean, it's not just those comments that where he's like, hey, just ship all the jobs to Mexico, mm -hmm. which is the idea you would suggest that. I mean, you're talking about ruining people's lives, which are ruining towns, yeah. right? Destroying entire cities and ruining people's lives. Um, just casually throwing that out there is unbelievable. Um, but he's, I mean, there's been so many clips that we've played here of him just being brazenly on the side of bosses and trashing the auto workers, et cetera, that it's nice to see this is obviously breaking through and actually helping to strengthen the resolve of the workers who are there striking on the picket line. No, I, that actually think is the most interesting part is that clearly they are paying attention right now. They can see how this is all being covered in the media. And as that happens, I think people are really starting to pay attention because the union has garnered a lot of public attention as to how the people who are in charge are reacting to this. Crystal, you found this clip of this billionaire, if you want to set that up. Yeah, so yeah. this dude, um, some CEO billionaire guy, goes on and uh, blames the unions for driving up inflation. We've got that clip for you, and we also have a little reminder of what his economic views mm -hmm. uh, have been historically, where he called for a, quote, nice little recession to force workers to get back in the offices. Let's take a listen to this. The UAW is on strike. Right. They're asking for 40% of wage increases. The unions, it's funny, because the Democrats, what's wrong with the Biden administration? Why is he so unpopular? It's inflation. That's what people say. It's the economy, dummy. It's the economy. People are, uh, have less in their pocket. But now he's backing the unions who are forcing wages up, which is creating the inflation he has to kill. Some of the cities that have issues on commuting, like New York or L.A. downtown, L.A. downtown, San Francisco, the CBD, that are difficult to commute to, that's where the pressure's so hard from workers saying, I don't want to drive into the city an hour and a half and drive home an hour and a half every day. But I also think a nice little recession will clear this, and you'll see people come back to the office. Nice, nice little, little recession. Nice little recession, Sagar. Great guy. <sighs> this stuff makes me so crazy. You know, it's like there's, it's been proven because every increase in the unemployment rate is directly tied to suicide. 2008 killed tens of thousands of people, and not to mention when you lose your health care, also money is the number one cause of divorce. It caused a huge amount of relational problems. People lost their houses. It's horrible. I mean, it ruined millions of people's lives and left a lot of trauma for a lot of families. And so when you were just casually talking about recession, you should never wish that on anyone. It leads to literally immediate death and to a tremendous amount of suffering, you know, throughout the entire economy and really on a personal level. That's the other thing that's so callous about the Jim Cramer, like, oh, just ship it to Mexico. I'm like, let's also just think about what we're saying there. We're like, we're gonna get these poor Mexicans to work with no worker protections. That's right. And with lower wages and exploit them in their country so that we can buy a car, which let's all be honest, it ain't gonna be cheaper 
The, the current price of a car is like $50,000. So they'll still keep the price the same. They're just going to take the money that they would have saved supposedly in wages. They're not going to pass it on to you. They're just going to take it right back to the shareholder. So all of this is just a very convoluted and disgusting way um, to look at the overall economy. But I think that you know the more that we highlight these things, the more attention that people can understand about what the people in charge really do think of them. Like whenever you try and make it a binary choice, if things start to get real revealing. And this that's is, where we're at. This is a psychopathic mentality. Yeah. It genuinely is. And just so everyone is totally clear, the stuff he said about inflation and workers' wages causing it is complete garbage, complete garbage, especially if you look specifically at the auto industry where workers have actually taken a pay cut mm -hmm. when you account for inflation, okay? Their pay has gone backwards at the same time that new car prices have skyrocketed. And you know what? The automakers have found that it is more profitable for them to sell fewer cars but have them be astronomically expensive. And by the way, like many other industries, use the excuse of inflation to jack up prices. And not to say they didn't have issues with supply chains, issues with semiconductors. Oh, there are some change. genuine things. And none of them had anything to do with the wages that these workers are being paid, which account for somewhere between 4 and 5% of the cost of the new car. So these supposedly brilliant minds, I don't know if he's just an idiot, I don't know if he hasn't looked at the numbers, or I don't know if he's just happy to shamelessly lie in service of his own twisted, ugly, psychopathic economic ideology. But whatever it is, what he's saying there is dead wrong, and there is no, there are no numbers that can back up what he is spouting there, the nonsense yeah. that he's spouting also on CNBC. I always way. think it's funny whenever people are talking about car, but they're like, oh, these wages, all this. I'm like, what, you don't want to talk about dealers? That's probably like the number one source of markup. Like you don't want to talk about the financing model and the way that a lot of these people even keep themselves afloat. You don't want to talk about industry, like you said, semiconductors. That's actually an area where national policy could get involved. I mean, the big three have nobody but themselves to blame in a lot of ways. I mean, they have not designed good cars for a long time. And in many any respects, it's not because of the union. It's because they got fat and happy and their shareholders were basically printing money by g giving themselves stock buybacks as well as the CEOs making a ton for themselves. And that's why Toyota, Tesla, and all these other people clean them up. So anyway, I think well, there's a I lot have more like a, a Ford F-150 and yeah. the Mach-E, and I love them both. Well, listen, Chris, so. those are the two <laughs> premier models. Go ask somebody they do driving make a some Chevy cars. Equinox how it compares to like a Honda CRV. You'd be a fool in my look. Uh, this is not an, uh, any advice. <laughs> in my opinion, you would be an idiot to buy an Equinox over like a CRV or a Rav4 or any of these other ones. And I think that honestly, that is a tragedy. Like if I think cars are cool, I wish America cars were awesome but if they are not at the higher end of the spectrum and we're talking about middle class you should buy asian every single time i'm only talking from a consumer level replacement parts you know mechanics reliability uh weather like on every metric it wins the only american car that can even come close on that is tesla and that's in the electric sector so anyway and that would be my uh well, and non-union personally but, yeah. i love my American-made cars. They're, they're, I'm, My you got cars great are great. Ones. You got actually the good ones, but I'm I saying the vast recommend. majority of people aren't buying those. But Go. what he's spouting is nonsense. Yeah. I do want to give people a quick update on what is going on with the strike. Um, go ahead and put this up on the screen about there was an announcement of an expansion of the strike, um, but they're only hitting uh, Ford or I guess expanding with Ford and GM. It looks like they are making some progress with uh, Stellantis, which is interesting. Wall Street Journal has a look here at some of the dynamics and what's going on. It looks like the big thing that Stellantis gave ground on was cost of living issues and the right to strike over plant closures, which is a really key ask here. Um, Fain says that they're making progress, but gaps still remain. So, um, you know, this just continues the pace. A lot of pain for the people that are involved and certainly a lot of pain mm -hmm. for these companies um, that are involved. That part I don't mind so much. And we'll see where we go from here. Fain has been making these announcements usually Friday morning of when and how they're going to expand the strikes. Remember, this is part of that stand-up strategy, which is we're not going to go out all at once to help preserve the strike fund and also to keep these companies on their toes about what's going to happen next. Um, seems like they're making a lot of progress at the negotiating table, even as they have not yet 
achieved their goals and don't have a contract with any of the big three. Um, so we will continue to watch it very closely because yes. obviously it's a huge deal, not just for auto workers, but for the economy overall. That's right. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.